Hello, and thank you so much for joining me for this talk. Um, I'm going to be talking about Hecate um, and my book, Keeping Her Keys, An Introduction to Hecate's Modern Witchcraft. It is June the 5th. It's five o'clock in the afternoon where I am in the world. Um, so welcome on into this space. If you're joining live and watching on Facebook, I encourage you just to pop a comment saying that uh, hello to everyone and letting everyone know where you are in the world as we start to create our space here as we gather those, everyone who's joining live. So just say where you are in the world as we start to create our space. I mentioned that it's June the 5th. I'm going to welcome in the astrological signatures, the stars into our space. We have a waning moon in Aries right now. Interestingly, I track and study um, the asteroid Hecate to see how she influences the astrology. And Hecate is also in Aries. She moved in there on May the 12th. So her energy and the energy of the moon in Aries is combining right now. And for these few days, we've been feeling a lot of that pull to independence. You know, we've been feeling more courageous. A lot of sovereignty energy happening in the first half of the month of June with uh, the planet of Jupiter and Pisces. So there's a lot of sovereignty energy happening right now. Of course, coming up on June the 10th, we have the new moon, uh, which is known to us Hecateans as the dark moon, which is when we typically hold rituals honoring Hecate. And this new moon on June the 10th is very special because it's also a solar eclipse. And that's coming, of course, in the sign of Gemini merging night and day, the beautiful underworld with the starry road above as we approach the summer solstice. So I welcome in all of these signatures, Mercury, of course, who is in Gemini and retrograde, and Venus, who recently moved into Cancer, Mars and Saturn as well, inviting all of the seven stars of Hecate's crown into our space today. I invite you now, if you're joining live or if you're watching the recording later, to just take a moment and to start to see in your mind that we're in a physical space and that we're gathered in a circle. And in the middle of this circle is a beautiful table. On that table is whatever you need to see in this moment. Just start to open up to the deeper world. Start to open up to Hecate and allow what you need to see to come forward as we start to see the altar in the middle of our circle. Now I'm going to invite you to add an offering to our altar. And the offering that we bring here today can be so many things, but I'm going to ask to begin by choosing one or two words that you're bringing to our gathering, whether you're live with us or you're watching the recording later. Just one or two words, scribble them down on a piece of paper, pop them in the text chat. What are the two words that you're bringing to our gathering? What are you offering? Whatever comes to mind first. My two words, I guess, would be excitement. I'm always uh, a little bit anxious about doing these kind of live events, especially since I'm in one platform and you're watching on Facebook Live, or if you're a student of mine, you're watching via Zoom um, within my organization. So I feel a little disconnected. And whenever I start to feel disconnected, um, from all of you in the circle, I get a little bit of anxiety, but I am really excited and I'm also very organized. I guess that was three words. So if you're here live, pop the two words that you're bringing and putting upon our altar um, into the text chat or write them down in your journal to explore later. Whatever two words come to the surface first are the two words that are invitations as well as offerings for you to explore more later on. It's what's coming up, what you need to pay attention to right in this moment. 
Now I'm going to add to our altar and create our sacred space for our gathering here by lighting our candles. If you have a candle ready, I encourage you to light it now as we begin to create our circle. So I'll start by lighting our Keeping Your Keys candle. It has the beautiful Keeper of the Keys illustration on it that I commissioned from the amazing Mary Martinez. There we go. Beautiful. So this is it. I cast the circle around us, creating sacred space. And I also have the candle for Covina, which is my organization. And bring blessings from my students and priestesses there for our time together today. Beautiful. The circle is now created. Now with your candle, see your candle added to our altar. And as it sits there on our altar, that candle becomes infused with the energy of our gathering. And now as we form this space, I will invite Hecate into our space. May she bless our time together and our other allies and so on. Our time together today is going to be divided into the first space that we just went through is our ritual of creating Temenos sacred space. And then I'm going to give a little bit of a talk just for a few minutes. And then I'll be leading us into Hecate's garden to receive a new key. So it's very exciting afternoon aligned up here. When I was thinking about what I wanted to highlight in the time that we have together, I decided to focus upon three of the most common questions that I get asked about Hecate and being a Hecatean. Just getting the screen share going here. There we go. So you may have already heard about Keeping Her Keys, this book that's 13 lessons that lead you on a journey through personal development, meeting at the crossroads with Hecate, her history, um, and it's her history, and it's also my personal experience and the data that I've observed from the hundreds of students that I've taught over the years, the lessons that are contained in this book. So I'm always so humbled when um, I think about how this book has traveled around the world and has so deeply touched so many people. I love all the messages that I receive absolutely phenomenal that this work um, has been so meaningful for so many people. When I think about the book, you know, I think about my journey of the book as the one who brought it to life. And I really see myself as the conduit, um, you know, my background as a psychologist, herbalist, ritualist, and so on, helped to craft the messages of Hecate as they were conveyed to me and my training and many years of experience as a researcher really helped me to synthesize what my students were experiencing and really offer what is truly a self uh, a self-directed course that you can do completely on your own. If you're ready for a, a deeper dive we're offering the Keeping Your Keys summer school starting in a few weeks and uh, the Mistai, which is the nine month journey uh, through the teachings of Hecate and her magic, medicine and mystery. That's really an introduction to depth psychology, how to work with your dreams, how to understand the stars, 
how to weave magic, of course, how to heal into your own unique wholeness. That starts up again in September, and we're having an open house in a few weeks. Uh, Tanya Cholik, who's the student coordinator uh, for the Kavina Institute, my school, she's going to be popping the link uh, to the link tree that contains everything that I mentioned here in our time together today. So you can grab that link if any of the things I was sa I'm saying capture your attention and you wanna learn more. So like I said, I wanted to, to touch upon some of the questions that I get asked a lot about Hecate. And we started calling this a little while ago, we started calling it Hecate's Help Desk. And one of my more popular YouTube videos um, is an episode of Hecate's Help Desk where I talk about offerings and so on. So you can find that on the YouTube channel that's linked in the link tree as well. I've picked three questions. It was hard to narrow it down to three questions, but nevertheless, we made it to three questions. So here we go, well, let's dive in. This is the question that I get asked the most from people who are completely new to Hecate. And, um, you know, I've often told my own experience of connecting with Hecate for the first time and that it was a late night, I was doing chores, I was down in the basement folding laundry and I was in that, you know, that almost that meditative state you get into when you're very tired and you're like, oh, I just gotta get these things done because work is coming in the morning. There's kids to get to school and work to go to. And all of a sudden in my voice, I heard, sorry, in my head, I heard this voice say, it's time. And I knew it was Hecate. Now I'm a psychologist, I'm a researcher, you know, I've spent years um, developing self-directed programs for, for women and families to help manage depression and chronic illness and so on. Um, I'd always been personally really, you know, a practitioner, an herbalist, um, you know, a seeker of the deeper world in many ways. But I did feel a little crazy when I had this voice inside of my head say it's time and the knowing that it was Hecate. So when we first get that little twitch, that thrum, a rumble, something in our soul starts to shake loose and the chains start to unfurl a little bit and we might have a dream or there's a synchronicity, we find a key, a black dog comes out of nowhere and so on. Something happens and we start to think, is this Hecate? And one story I've heard many, many times, hundreds of times, is that I'll get a message from someone and it goes something like this. It's like, hi, I'm not sure how I ended up on your site, your blog, your podcast, with your book, you know, fill in the blank kind of thing. But here I am and I think Hecate is calling me, but I don't know. And then my answer is, well, we're here. You've been led here. You've followed the trail and you've gotten here, you've paid attention. And so much of knowing that it's Hecate is just allowing ourselves to take that key. It's like she slides that key under the first gate of hers and we have to reach down and pick up that key and then open that first door. And that requires, you know, starting to trust ourselves, trusting our own feelings, trusting that this awakening that we're having, that's Hecate and our soul stirring and all that that's happening to us, trusting those feelings and beginning that journey of connecting to Hecate and her deeper world. Using our intuition, this is a quote from the Keeping Her Keys book, use your intuition to determine if a thought or image that occurs to you as a sign from Hecate, lean into it. Do the same with your external surroundings. Pay attention to what's going on inside of you and around you. If you practice this for a few weeks, you'll really strengthen your awareness of Hecate. Once it's an established habit, you'll do it automatically and you'll become connected to her, the deeper world, 
synchronicities, and so on. So use your inter intuition for interpreting whether something is a sign rather than referring to sources because this intuition is vital for becoming a powerful witch. It's And that's from lesson three of the Keeping Your Keys book. It's so, so important for me to convey to you that we live in the information age. There's so many websites, so many books, so many things for us. We can get super overwhelmed if we start looking all around us. The journey of awakening the soul and connecting to Hecate is an inward journey that's about awakening the intuition. And I always counsel students to begin with what feels right, make some notes, and then do your research. Don't rely on what anybody else, including me, has to say about Hecate or your own private spiritual journey. Turn to books, courses, and so on when they feel right for you. And this is really how I tried to write this book to say, you know, I'm going to talk about some psychological practices, some very practical kind of personal development practices, and also uh, things from depth psychology, talking about dreams, the deeper world, and so on, the soul that comes to us from depth psychology. I'm going to offer you these practices. I'm going to meld them all together with the magic, medicine, and mystery of Hecate that I've developed over my years of being both a practitioner and a teacher. But use these things. These tools will work. They will fundamentally transform your, your, your life, who you are. They'll allow the soul to be what you bring to the world. They'll break chains. There's so much healing. And at the same time, there's space for you to find your own journey. And that journey really begins by turning to our intuition. The number two question I get asked so often is, how do I connect with Hecate? Now, of course, this, set, this comes in so many different wordings, but this is what it's about, the gist of it. It's like, okay, I feel called. Um, and maybe I'm, I'm still a little bit hesitating to trust myself, but I'm very drawn to Hecate. I'm very drawn to this path. Your book thrums with me. This image of Hecate really like ignites something within me, you know, whatever it is, the song, all of these things are happening and I wanna go deeper. Where do I begin? Beginning, I would say, begin just by lighting a candle. You know, that ritual we did to start our gathering here today. Offer her the two words that are front of mind right now. Light your candle, soften your gaze into it. What can happen is very much like in this beautiful photograph, we can feel like even though um, she often sends avian allies, so you can see the bird is holding her torch there, lighting our way, but we can feel like we're blindfolded. But if you look close at this image, what you see is that it's really an opaque blindfold, that the woman could see through the blindfold if she opened her eyes. And I think the number one tip I have for connecting with Hecate um, is just to become aware. And there's so many different beautiful ways to become aware. The intuition is where we begin. And going deeper into trusting ourselves and trusting her. It's a journey, you know, follow that pale torchlight. And I've got a quote from the book where I talk about connecting to Hecate so much in the book. Uh, this is one that I chose. Using her symbols like keys, torches, snakes, helps to focus attention on connecting to Hecate. Sometimes these symbols, including black dogs, show up unannounced, indicating that she's close to us and wants our attention. We call those synchronicities. Other times, connecting to the energy of the symbol in a more ritualistic, intentional way provides a conduit or a portal for direct communion with Hecate. I see her in all aspects of everyday life, especially the natural world 
So look for those signs, the unexpected bird ally that shows up, for example. There are so many opportunities to meditate on her creation as a means of connecting to her. And I chose this um, ancient plaque representing um, Hecate as the triple goddess. Certainly that is one of her symbolic archetypal forms um, that has many of the symbols that we still associate with her today. Those twin torches, the lights she shines, sometimes often depicted as well as uh, lanterns. If you think back to the last picture that I showed. So she's Lampadios, which means lamp bearer as well as torch bearer. Um, her snake, you can see it, her sword or dagger and so on, her keys. I wanted to share one historical image of Hecate just to highlight that there is a, over 3,500 years of recorded history of Hecate. It's a lot. I have been studying uh, Hecate's history from that psychological lens for over a decade now. I still learn new things. So don't get overwhelmed with the history. You know, follow the threads as they kind of come to you. And don't think that because Hecate perhaps come, shows you a dream and in the dream, um, you know, she looks different than what you may have seen another image, or maybe she sends you a butterfly. Don't think that that can't be Hecate. Don't fall into the trap of dogma. When we look at his, Hecate's history, what we're seeing is how others have encountered and experienced and written about her. And her history is complicated. You know, her history is woven in to the history of the witch. It's complicated. It goes from being beautiful about being the great mother to being vilified. And, you know, now we're in the period of reclaiming. There's a lot there. Study it, explore it, um, go deeper into it, and really just allow what feels right to you to be the, 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 the road that you follow her on. The number three question I get asked, and these questions aren't in any specific order, maybe except for that first one, which I do get asked, seem to get asked a lot. Uh, how can I heal into my own unique wholeness? This is a beautiful image by the fabulous Brooke Shaden. Uh, and it really shows, I think, for what a lot of us go through. We have this keyhole inside of us that's the soul. And we go through a lot of different keys to find what fits in order so we can become whole and reconnect it and turn that key and open the way back to our, our soul and the deeper world and manifesting um, our desires and so on. My work really focuses on um, healing, healing into wholeness. My, I get so many messages from people who are doing the healing work from trauma, addiction, chronic illness, and so on. And the journey of Hecate, as I teach uh, teach it using so much depth psychology and plant medicines and so on, is a journey of healing into our own unique wholeness. And this is a process. You know, it's not one and done. There's no one stone you can buy or one thing that's going to immediately help you recover though I've developed uh, what I call quotidia, a daily ritual that has three parts consisting of lighting the candle, meditation certainly, and also oracle work is so key to connecting to Hecate and the soul. In the book, there is a lesson on divination that includes the Enodia oracle. In the book, it's called the Approach Avoid Tarot Reading. Um, I teach it as the Enodia Oracle, which is about doing daily oracular work with uh, two cards. There is so much more to healing into our own wholeness, but meditation, connecting, using the candle, the daily oracle will certainly get you well on your way. And it helps to create that daily ritual that is so, so important. 
you know, I've been um, a psychologist for a long time, and I know that the road to healing is done through those daily bits. I, I'm so happy that the audiobook for Keeping Your Keys is going to be released at the end of June, and you can find the link to the pre-order in the, uh, the link tree link being shared in the comments. And I wanted to share just a little bit, just to uplift the audiobook a little bit, i share just a little bit of the new introduction that I wrote for the audiobook. It's been two years since Keeping Her Keys was published. At the time, I had no idea that the book would become popular, so true, let alone still be on the top of the publisher's best-selling list <coughs> as I write this note. I am so pleased to be able <coughs> <laughs> to sh <coughs> excuse me, share the keys of Hecate's modern witchcraft as an audiobook. Hecate is fundamentally the return to the soul, and so many ancient authors. You read the Chaldean oracles, for example, and others, and modern authors such as Dr. James Hillman and Thomas More describe Hecate as the soul and the return to the soul so amazingly well. She offers us the keys of her magic, medicine, and mystery so that we can heal into our own unique wholeness. Now this journey we're on, of course, is uh, not a straight line. It is very much like this symbol I've put up here, which is Hecate's wheel. Uh, also known as the Strophilos, and it has a few other names as well. So this wheel really shows us that our lives are part of this huge wheel that is the whole universe, <coughs> and that Hecate spins this wheel. So just take a minute just to take in the different parts of this wheel. Excuse me. You can see it's very labyrinthine. It's a serpent, perhaps a coiled serpent. And at the middle is a star, the soul star. You know, the essence of who we are that is eternal and so much greater than anything that we're currently going through, greater than this incarnation, so much more. And this wheel, you know, we're part of it and it turns and it spins. And of course, it's you know similar to the modern wheel of the year that many of us are familiar with. In uh, my organization, we follow uh, the moon cycles. So we honor Hecate by following the moon months and we do a different exploration of an aspect of Hecate, often called an epithet of Hecate every month. Uh, and we use different correspondences, so different spirits that we're connecting with, and so on. So let's just take that a little bit deeper and come back to our altar that we created at the start of our time together. So this is the specific segment of the Great Wheel of the Year, which I call Avatas, um, in my school. So this is our altar for this month. We're in the moon month of Enodia, which will be ending soon, of course, because we've got the new moon coming up. Uh, we work with sigils. We explore an archetype of the self. You can see the maiden represented there. That's from the, um, the Wild Unknown Archetypes deck by Kim Kranz. So the sigil um, that looks like a key kind of is uh, the sigil for Kavina and the one, the other one is the sigil for Anodia and the Maiden. And you can see Smoky Quartz, Dami, uh, Damiana is our plant medicine for the month and Horse is our animal ally for the month. So let's just start to connect to our altar as we prepare to go into our meditative journey. Just thinking about your candle on that altar, whether it was a physical one that you lit or it's just one that's appearing now in your mind's eye. Just start to connect with that.
And now let's begin the process of going into our meditation. I'm inviting you to close your eyes. And just relax, taking a breath here, just becoming aware of the breath. Shifting your weight into your sitting bones, planting your feet, or stretching them out. Now let's take another breath. We're gonna take it past the throat, past the heart, down to the root. Holding it here and letting it go. Now let's take another breath, past the throat, past the heart, down through the belly, right down to that root again, holding it here as the root unfurls, stretching down through the legs, through the floor and deep into the earth, tethering us, grounding us, so that we can journey well into the deeper world of Hecate. Now let that breath go. Nice long exhale, letting it go. Now we're going to take our breath again past the throat to the heart, stopping at the heart center now. Holding it here, allowing that breath to awaken that deeper heart center. I want you to envision a strong back and a soft front, feeling the energy that I'm sending, whether you're here live or you're watching the recording, the energy of everyone else gathered here today, the energy coming in from the priestesses, it's that beautiful energy and letting that breath go as the heart is awakened and connected to the root, creating that channel. Now we're going to do something a little bit different with the breath, keeping the eyes closed. Take the breath, stopping it right here at the throat with me. Feeling that breath travel upwards to the sinuses and the skull. Feeling that energy just start to relax the chatter in the mind and letting it go. Now let's breathe to the throat again. Pulling it up, you know where we're going. We're going up, up, up to the crown. And as we turn our attention to the crown, we see all the clutter in the mind start to just relax, settle down like birds roosting. And you see with the deeper self, you see from the vantage point of the soul. Some people call this the third eye. You see that way now. And as that third eye opens, you see a gate. And that gate now opens. Now let's walk through that gate. Now we're here in Hecate's realm, the deeper world, the sacred, the, mis the mysteries. Noticing here the temperature. Is it hot or cool, humid, dry? 
Noticing here the time of day. Night. Is there a moon? Day. Is there sun? Or is it the liminal times in between? Step deeper now into the garden. Noticing your surroundings. You see her plant medicine. What plants do you see? Stepping deeper into the garden now, you start to smell its smells. Perhaps you see other occupants of the garden. Maybe those of us here on the journey together. Maybe an animal ally. Maybe one of Hecate's companions. As you walk deeper and deeper into the garden, taking it all in. And now you look straight ahead and you see the altar with all the candles and offerings on it. And you come before it and you maybe sense the presence of all of us taking this same journey at this same time. Maybe you feel the warmth and love Or maybe this journey is meant to be yours alone. However it is evolving is how it is meant to be. Standing here now, you begin to feel a change in the air. There is a sense of something beyond comprehension, of power and majesty, of healing, of awakening. There is a rumble inside of you and a thrum under your feet as though drums somewhere are beating, though you can't hear them. And you've been so busy sensing and feeling these changes that you didn't notice. But Hecate now stands right before you. Taking her in as she shows herself to you. And in her hands, she has a key. Now, this might be an actual key, or it might take the form of what a key is for you right now. It can be many different things that she's holding in her hands. Open your hands now. Hold them by your heart center and allow her to place this key in your hands and in your heart. And she may kiss your forehead. She may touch you or say a few words or say nothing at all. Beautiful, such beautiful energy here, such trust and sovereignty. And beautiful gifts from Hecate. Now, as you've been paying attention to your gift, you realize that Hecate is gone as quick as she arrived. And you now know it's time to depart her garden. So let's begin the journey back. As our gift 
becomes part of who we are. Walking down that path, noticing the plants, the animals, the others. Being a little bit sad to leave, but being so, so content with what you've received. And now we come to the gate and we step through the gate once more. Seeing that gate close, bringing that symbol back as we start to come back into our physical selves. And as the gate closes, our crown relaxes and our mind goes back to that everyday unified field of both the very practical and the mystical. And we come back traveling, pulling the breath down past the throat to the heart where we relax our heart center and the medicine of the key we received travels down through the heart. And then finally, down to the root, deep in the belly, cradled around those sitting bones of ours as the key medicine starts to permeate here. Let's take one really deep breath, right from crown to root together. And let it go. And as we let it go, those tethers that are keeping us ground us grounded relax a bit. And we find ourselves going back into regular consciousness. I thank you so much for joining me for this meditation. It's been phenomenal. Um, the, the energy was just absolutely beautiful in the meditation. I thank you to everyone who has helped to create this experience here today. And as you come into your body, if you've got a few things you need to just jot down quickly, you know, make a couple of notes, just hold those as little, little tethers, little anchors for what you experienced in journey today. Um, and I do believe I have time for a few questions. So if there are questions, I would love to answer them. All right, thanks, I'm saying thanks to Trevor. <laughs> so I don't think we have any questions. I don't see any questions popping up. So I will say thank you again for joining me. And um, hail Hecate, you can uh, find more about everything I've talked about in that link tree link that should be in the comments, whether you're watching this as a recording on Facebook or on YouTube or wherever you're finding it. Um, here's the Keeping Her Keys book. You can connect with me and go deeper into my work um, through the Covina Institute, lots of information through those linked tree links. Um, oh, black dogs, we didn't have time to talk about black dogs. You know, lean into what the black dog was doing or what anything that comes to you that feels like it's of Hecate, what is it doing? And look to your dreams, always look to your dreams because those outer synchronicities that we get are manifestations of something that's going on in the deeper self and, and that it comes to us in dreams. So I would say, see where your dreams are at and that'll help you 
um, to understand your experience that you're having in the waking world. Um, another quick question, how do we incorporate Hecate into our daily lives? Uh, certainly, I talk a lot about that in this book. Uh, you can grab those other links in the link tree that's shared. Uh, for me, my teachings, I talk about the daily ritual, which I call Quotidia. Um, that's a, a course, a free small course that is featured in that link tree as well. If you want a deeper experience of it, you can join my school um, for that daily ritual. I think daily practice is absolutely the key. And look for, become aware, just pay attention. She's already there and it's up to us to pay attention to her. All right. Thanks so much, everyone.